Well, hello everyone. Robin back here with um, part two of the story of Moses. Did you find it uh, in the Bible, the, uh, the story of Moses? Actually, it's a really long story and uh, I don't think I could even fit it into two parts if I told all of it. Anyway, let's carry on from where we got to and uh, I'll try and finish it in this session. So if you remember, Moses and his brother Aaron were on their way back to Egypt in order to see the Pharaoh and to tell them, tell him uh, what he had to do. And if you remember, the Lord God had said to him, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So that's just what Moses did. He and his brother managed to get to see the Pharaoh and told him that the Lord God of Israel wanted his people released from Egypt so that they could go into the desert and worship him. Now Pharaoh was a difficult man and he didn't really like the idea at all of letting these people go, who he turned into slaves so that they could build lots of buildings for the Egyptians. Anyway, he thought about it and then he said, no, no, I'm not going to let them go. Go on, off you go. Moses warned him that if he didn't, a whole series of difficulties, plagues, pestilences, all kinds of things would happen to Egypt. But Pharaoh said, no, no, I, I don't believe in your God. I believe my gods are more powerful. So Moses and Aaron left and then started a whole series of terrible things that happened to the people of Egypt. Every time something happened, Moses went back and said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But he wouldn't. And those plagues and difficulties became more and more difficult. There were ten in all that were sent and things like locusts all over the land. There were deaths of people because the water turned into blood. And every time Pharaoh thought, yeah, well, maybe I will let them go. And then, then he changed his mind and said, no. Well, eventually it came to the 10th plague. And Moses and Aaron went back to see Pharaoh. And they said to him, Pharaoh, if you don't let the people of Israel go, then your every firstborn child in your land will die. Now you see these things that had happened happened to the Egyptians but not to the Hebrews, not to the Jewish people. And with this plague as well God had got the same idea. And so he said to Moses, look when I send this plague over Egypt the, the Hebrew people have got to do something very very special. You must warn them they've got to do exactly what you tell them. Because tonight, the angel of death will pass over the land of Egypt and everybody who is not protected will lose their firstborn sons, including Pharaoh. So tell my people that what they have to do is to take a lamb, a perfect lamb, that they must kill it, ready to eat, that they must roast it, and after they have eaten it, they must take the blood from the lamb and paint it on the doorposts and across the lintel of the door. So it went up like that and across like that. And then he said, before it gets dark, everybody in the family, including the oldest to the youngest, must go inside their houses, pass under the blood on the door and then wait inside. So that's what happened. It was very quiet that night in Egypt as the people waited. And just as God had promised, the angel of death passed over the land of Egypt and the firstborn of every person and of every animal as well died, except for the Hebrew people were inside their houses, protected by the blood 
of the Lamb. And they heard the crying and wailing coming from the Egyptians and they felt very, very sad and sorry for them. But they'd been given a chance and they had rejected it. And so Moses said the next morning, I'm going back to see Pharaoh. And he went to see Pharaoh and this time Pharaoh said, okay, that's it. Get out of my land. Go on. I don't want to see any Hebrews ever again. And Moses said, I will organise it so that we all leave today. So he got everybody together. They came out of their houses. They packed their goods and they followed Moses out into the desert, away from Egypt. And as they walked, the Egyptians even gave them money, silver and gold, to say, look, here you are, but don't come back. And so he was, they, they went and they left Egypt with more money than they'd ever brought into it. Now, as they went from Egypt, they made their way towards the Red Sea. And as they came towards it, a terrible thing happened. Pharaoh, who had been very angry with them, if you remember, decided, I am not going to let them go. I am going to kill them all. And so he got his army together, his chariots, his soldiers, and he said to them, pursue the Hebrews and kill them all. Now Moses and the people, there were a lot of them. I mean, there were about a million of them. And they were heading towards the Red Sea when they saw the cloud of dust go up behind them. And somebody said, look, look over there. There's an army coming after us. It's Pharaoh's army, it's his chariots. We're trapped, we're trapped between the army and the Red Sea. And panic began to arise amongst the people. And Moses prayed to God and he said, oh Lord God, you haven't brought us out of Egypt by your might and by your power just to see us die here by the Red Sea. And God spoke to Moses. He answered his prayer. And he told Moses to lift his staff over the waters. So Moses stood on the banks of the Red Sea. He lifted up his staff. He held it out above the water. He didn't say anything. That's all he did. And then suddenly this great wind came up. And it pushed the waters in different directions. So eventually there was a pathway through the sea. And not only was there a pathway, but the bottom of it was dry. And Moses said, quickly, quickly, cross over, cross over. We've got to pass over. And so they went through the sea, with the sea piled up on either side of them. It must have been terrifying. And Moses led them through to the other side, into the land, into the land of, uh, on the other side of the Red Sea which was a desert area. But when they arrived there, they all crossed safely, just as Pharaoh and his army and his chariots arrived. They saw what had happened and they charged after the Hebrews, knowing that they had to kill them on Pharaoh's orders. By the time they were all in the bottom of the Red Sea with the waters piled up on either side of them, the wind. The waters tumbled back in and Pharaoh's army was completely drowned and wiped out. But on the other side, God's people were safe with Moses, with Aaron, and he was going to lead them for another 40 years to the promised land. God bless you and I hope that when you find the story, you might even read the rest of it. Bye.